Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Thank you, first of all, for your gifts. Um, I actually received a bundle of buttons from, I don't know how to pronounce the word, but his name is Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, you know who you are. And I also received a card from someone with a little gift in it that she wanted to keep private. Thank you so, so much. You know who you are as well. I really appreciate any cards, gifts, anything that you guys, you know, messages that you leave me in the comments. The fact that you watch my videos, I really appreciate it and it helps the channel and it helps me to continue making these videos. I don't receive any compensation whatsoever. I'm not a giant YouTuber. You know, I don't, you know, I have a few subscribers, so... Whatever you guys do for me, I greatly appreciate it, and it keeps me going. So without further ado, let's look at what we have today. So I'm kind of excited about this one. I think I get excited about a lot of these projects. But this one actually took me a while to make because I had to collect items that actually related to the individual I was making this for. And it is actually a gift for someone. And what I did is... I, when I make these, I like looking at the person, their life, you know, except even their family history, their accomplishments, etc. And I try to incorporate some of that into these projects. So what you see here is a junk journal box or junk journal, journal treasure box is what I like to call them. And here what I did is I used quite a bit of actual ephemera, so vintage items going back to the 60s, as well as some items that are even older than that. It, like this stamp is actually from 1868, this stamp. And I also used, obviously you can see other bits and bobs here and there. So what I did is I did use my old friendly Mod Podge um, as well as another glue finish that I use after the Mod Podge dries. I usually use like two coats of Mod Podge. Then I have my other secret little like mixture that I put together and I go over like all the paper that's being used or even if stickers are being used, go over all of that and you will have something that will last forever. And even if it gets a little bit wet, you have like a few minutes before you need to wipe it off, nothing will be ruined. So you can see there's some stuff here from the NFL. Um, we actually did a Super Bowl commercial for the New England Patriots versus whoever they were going against in that year's Super Bowl. So we have some like memories from that kind of thought that was going to happen. Um, also, there are some, as you know me, pearl buttons, as well as just a couple regular buttons on there. Some carnelian from a trip that we took overseas some years ago, and just some patches, you know, that kind of have a military motorcycle-esque feel to them. The book corners are awesome for the cigar. I, and actually what I did use as my number one base is a cigar box. Great resource for cigar boxes. Talk to people who have cigar shops and usually for nothing or maybe just a dollar or two, they will pay you to take them away. And using the corners on these boxes, it just gives it a little more richness, a little more je ne sais quoi. And here you can see there's bits of brass and other metal or metallic objects. And that's mostly from costume jewelry, men, like men's jewelry here, men's ju jewelry there, piece signed from an earring I had. This is from a military brass button, etc. This, the paperwork that you see, such as this beautiful black swan, is actually from a book that is dated... 1927 and it had the book pretty much destroyed from weather not being properly stored by the person who had it previously but gorgeous pictures in there that I could recover and use for projects and to get the feathers to look like this I did have to use my permanent markers to kind of enhance and highlight 
things and then once you go over it like with your Mod Podge in My Secret Solution, you end up with this beautiful finish that almost looks textured. Behind that is another piece of ephemera which actually came from a book about ancient, ancient, adios mio, ancient Egypt. I can't speak today, it's kind of weird. Um, and yes, so the beat goes on there. And you know me, don't forget about decorating the sides of your boxes or your journals. And so here I have some stones and crystals from some of two of our trips to the Caribbean. Those are two different trips, two different stones. This beautiful, like, um, textured trim. I actually put that around the edges. And I use jeweler's glue because... I mean, this stuff isn't going anywhere without a chisel. And just a couple little lovebirds, etc. But I also did not want to forget about the bottom of the box. So on the bottom of the box, look at this. It's almost as interesting as the top of the box. It's just a great surprise element. And I made the bottom using... This is from a single earring. It was four pieces, and this is actually one of his mother's old earrings. And I just used my jeweler's pliers, broke it apart, ended up with four little feet on the bottom. And as you can see, more buttons, this beautiful piece of Aztec artwork that actually came out of a book about the Aztecs. And you know, another patch is here. And once again, this is what you end up with. And behind the Velvet Lounge Life, please remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and comment because when you do that, it really helps the channel grow. And share the videos with like-minded people in your Facebook groups. I really would appreciate that. You can even ask them, what do you think about this? Something as simple as that. And leaving the link to this video is very helpful. But yes, so this is what the bottom looks like. And I actually have his name is behind this, his full name. So let's open this up and see what we have. So you know how I love the element of surprise. So what I decided to do is go a little bit wild on the inside of this box. So this is what the inside looks like. And let me see if I can get that into frame a bit better for you and just a tiny bit smaller there so what you see here is of course the back panel of the box so and yes when I use the paper on the outside and applied it I actually folded it under the lip it's to me it's about all of the little tiny finishing touches or what make any project extra special. So I, I look for details. Like when you open the box, is this painted on the inside? Like the lip on the inside? Or was it just left plain? Like those are things that you will, either a person obviously is like learning the craft or maybe, you know, there was some sort of preference to leave it that way. But or obviously if it's made in, you know, mass, like if it's just a mass produced item, sometimes it's purposely left as is because it's less expensive than if obviously they put in all the finishings because finishings are what take the most time. So to me, as I stated, it's all about the details. And that's one of my favorite quotes from Julia Child. And I kind of use that as one of my probably 70 philosophies in life and I definitely believe it's about the details so when you open this you know the person will see the inside is completely finished you know it's colored it's consistent that's another thing I look for are consistencies and that's what I tried to do with this so what I have here is a pocket that I built into the inside of the box and that pocket holds a junk journal and we will go through this junk journal in a moment. 
But in the meantime, on the back of the box, what you see is this. You see like all these little bits and bobs and details. And you know, the pocket, you can put other things in it. It's completely usable. And it's even a little bit expandable, which is a good thing because room to grow. I, I'm always into that. I included one of my pencils. If you guys remember, I was creating this pencil in another video. And what I will do is link some videos down below for you. One will be about how I make these pencils. The other one, will, others will be about how you can make manly things um, for the manly dude in your in your life. And you can, um, you know, still do the thing that you love, which is creating junk journals, junk journal treasure boxes, etc. So nothing says personalization more than adding things such as this came from a book from the 1800s, this beautiful letter A with all this floral work around it. Um, look at this little bit of the music I added and this guy here that's playing an instrument. Um, his father and his uncle um, were mu musical prodigies. So that's kind of an homage to them. Our, his favorite vehicle, and we had a couple of these, were Jeeps. Um, and he's kind of getting back into that. So I added that. So I'm just saying, you know, personality, you know, a quote from one of his Fa favorite people, which he has probably like 12, maybe a little bit more rhythm and blues in the background. The box has, you know, this is a bit Bob that was made by our child. And yes, the person I made this for is my husband. Um, a watch, and I don't remember what the importance of this watch was to him. I think it was like the first decent watch that he got and it was from his parents. Um, this is his military tag with his name on it. Here we have, because he's a lover of Spider Dude, um, and our daughter actually made this, but this is basically a series of pockets where he can, you know, put things in there in all these little pockets, sort of like a billfold. Work hard, of course. And I made this out of a series of envelopes here. There's like a little note area, etc. And this is um, a series of pages from a book that famous people or notable people here in the United States noted what they thought it would be like in the year 2020. And that was like, I want to say that book was like two decades old. So at the point when we got it, um, a, a commencement card for our child, our husband's first round of season tickets um, t for his favorite football team. And that's what this book is, a bunch of memories that, you know, you would put, you know, when you think about it, most people have a little junk box or they may even put these little bits and bobs in a jewelry box sometimes, it depends. But this is like a one-stop shop for keeping all those things together, especially so that if something does happen, I know this sounds crazy, but if something happens to you, at least people will know this box had meaning and the things in it are there for some purpose. And so what I did um, to the bottom of the box, and this is something I do need to do a better job at, at least I believe, is I created this pillow to go inside. And the issue I had was, first of all, getting it to the right size so that it completely, completely covers the bottom of the box. And then what I did is when I figured out the measurements, etc., is I stuffed the inside of the pillow with fill and I also did my own version, I'll call it that, of tufting. And so that ended up looking like this inside with some pearl buttons, some metal buttons, and of course the United States military button, army button in the middle. And then what I ended up doing, and this was a harder part, was gluing this down so that it will, you know, be there forever. And this is what I came up with. And so now it has a nice cushiony bottom. He can 
you know, stick pins in it, or as I did, just fill the box with whatever he wants to fill it with. So let's look at the journal. So the journal is sort of like in the style of one of my scrapbook journals. So, of course, I wanted to link in this journal with the box. So what I did is repeated the color yellow. Of course, this is the same font as the name on the box, but in a reverse colors. And this bit of, I'm going to call it brocade trim. And there, you know, are a couple other things to sort of tie everything together. On the back, what I have is, and this is more of a joke, um, these are supposed to be ugly sweaters, but they're actually not that ugly. They're kind of cute. Um, and this is an area where he can, once again, have a pocket to store things. Or he could even use this sort of like a picture frame and put a photo in there. Nothing ugly about it. And I'm making this, I used an envelope and I love it because we have this particular company that mails us like stuff all the time. And they use these really big um, window envelopes. So I always recover those and use them now in these projects versus like the smaller or even the small size envelope window, when envelopes with the windows. And the envelopes are also very big, so I could cut them down to whatever size I need. This is washi tape. The, this actually came from an advertisement that was mailed to us. This came from a news business newspaper. And this actually comes out. I made my famous slide here so that he can like take this in and out. And he could put it back in, which is easier if you have two hands and it has a little catch so it's not going to come out and then to open this I just used a piece of ribbon which definitely needs to be ironed once again I said it's all about the detail so I will be ironing that before I wrap this up and great upsets of the NFL because hello once again tying into that football theme that's in the box as well and these are pages with pictures and memories and some newspaper articles. And you know that I have to use one of my famous pop outs. This one I made a little bit simpler and it's lined so he can actually write on it. And some quotes, some pockets, of course, but behind the pocket, there's some leaves. And what else? Oh, of course, just some scrap bits are in there. This I actually took from an old photo album. So it's actually one of those photo album things. I used it sort of as an insert so he can put, and you can see there's stuff in here. And then more stuff is in here that are memories. And here we have a hidden area where he can write, you know, some things. And I love these. Thank you so much, um, Julia, because this came from Julia. But so did in these beautiful stickers, which I love. Love those stickers because they're partially transparent and the pictures on them are still fabulous. And then you open this. Yes, another surprise, you guys. And you end up with another notebook area. So I added this notebook area. His favorite color is green. Of course, hello, NFL stuff. You know us, we have to have those belly bands. So there's a belly band. There's a pocket here, right down here. So he can stick some more cool stuff in there, such as maybe these old season tickets. He has like maybe four of these packets and I only selected one. I think this is the first year that he actually started doing the season ticket thing. So you have a pocket there, nice, big and roomy. Um, and then that's it. You retie this, put it back into the junk journal treasure box and you hope that the person loves it. They're surprised. They're, you know, they love the detail, the time that you put into it. Obviously this is not a rush um, project. And of course he has his pencil there. So you just re-secure everything. Everything has a home. 
close this up and it is ready for gifting. So something that is coming up, which I, I'm excited about, I actually started this project and it is, you know, one that is not going to happen overnight, but it involves all of these tags that I made and I will be using, I would say most of them. Button lovers will delight junk journal creators and those who are just fans of the junk journal and love to, you know, possess them will also be hopefully incredibly excited about this project. So that's why I have these in the picture. <laughs> They're just sort of a little precursor to what's coming up. And I have mentioned this project in um, previous videos before, but like I said, I'm really like starting to work on it. And the cool thing is something you could do like while you're just watching TV, watching a movie, Netflixing, whatever it is that people do. And yeah, so I can't wait to like finish that and show you guys what I came up with. So thank you guys for watching The Velvet Lounge Life. Um, please remember to subscribe to the channel. We really need the subscribers and we also need you guys to actually watch the videos for at least 15 to 20 minutes or more or just listen to them. You could be cleaning your house. You could be doing something else and just listening to my melodious voice. Okay, I know it's not melodious, but you can just listen if you want to, and that way we can get the minutes that we need um, to help the channel grow. So thank you all for tuning in. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate some other holiday, Hanukkah, for example, Kwanzaa, I wish you a happy Kwanzaa. I wish you a happy Hanukkah. But mostly I wish all of us a fantastic new year. Things are getting better and it's getting more exciting because we have a couple projects coming up that you guys can be a part of. So you will hear more about that coming up after the new year, but I will drop hints here and there. Also check out our new community page on YouTube. Thanks to you guys, we had enough subscribers that YouTube um, opened up the community page option for us. So thank you, we couldn't have had that option without you guys. And all it is is sort of like a bulletin board where we can post like just random small bits and bobs. Also, we do have a couple YouTube shorts which you will see out there on occasion. And it's, I believe the videos are 15 minutes, I'm sorry, 15 seconds or less. And they're just little bits and bobs and snippets. And yes, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember that your health is your wealth. Without your health, you have absolutely nothing. So please take care of yourselves. And I am going to post who the winners were of our fantastic free fall giveaway on the community tab. So if you want to know if you're a winner, look at the community tab of this YouTube channel. Thank you.